Money. When it comes right down to it, that's what horse racing is all about these days. Incredible purchase prices, huge purses, big bets, and hopefully even bigger payoffs. If it weren't for the money, who in the world do you think would come to the racetrack? Not the horsemen, and most certainly not the betters. And now tonight, here we are just moments away from the first million dollar event, either thoroughbred or standard bred, in the history of Canadian horse racing, the North America Cup. And as usual, the bottom line is money. Listen, John, I've had a bit of a run of bad luck tonight, but I got a sure thing in the feature. Can you lend me a fin? How about a deuce? North America Cup is Canada's first million dollar horse race, and this could be horse racing's next millionaire. He's Jake Lobel, owner of a 151 and 2 career best mile. He's already being called the best pacer of the 1980s, and maybe the best ever. And against a very impressive field, he'll get the chance to prove it tonight, just like he did in New Jersey three weeks ago. Here is an amazing performance. Jake Lobel going on to win it, Mark O'Meara urging him on the final time, 151 and 2. Jake Lobel is unquestionably the biggest star in the standard bread industry today. But as everyone found out in the New Jersey Sire Stakes final a few weeks ago, in horse racing, nothing is for certain. Jake the Great was handed his only career defeat by John Campbell and run the table. But that was Jade Lobel's only career defeat, so he's still the prohibitive favorite for the North America Cup. His major competition will come from two horses. Rare Review, a Canadian entry, trained by Stu Furlot, driven by Doug Brown. Rare Review set a track record and a lifetime record at Greenwood just a few weeks ago. Into the stretch, rare review by two. Frugal Gourmet is second. Perfect Morning is closing on the outside. All's Great is fourth. Sherwood Abe is fifth. Coming to the payoff now. And rare review is opening up by three lengths. The battle's for second. Perfect Morning is coming on on the outside. Frugal Gourmet is now third. Rare review by four. It's rare review in 154 and two fifths. The North America Cup has had a history of Canadian success stories, and rare review may add another chapter to it this evening. One more horse to be considered in this race, though, is Log, a gray. As a matter of fact, the fastest gray in the history of standard bred racing. In the North America Cup eliminations a week ago, Log got stuck three wide for much of his heat and still had plenty left at the finish. He's a feisty horse, even a bit ornery, but he's lots of horse, and he will be a factor in the North America Cup. So Log and Rare Review shape up as two of the horses to watch in the 1987 renewal of this event. But when they go postward, the one thing you can count on is that Jade Lobel will be the favorite. And it's only fitting that if Jade Lobel is to become a millionaire, it could happen in the Million Dollar North America Cup right here on TSN. Hello everyone and welcome to Greenwood Raceway in Toronto. I'm Steve Cooney. I'm glad you could join us tonight because you're about to be part of Canadian horse racing history. You'll be seeing right here on TSN the North America Cup, the first million dollar event in the history of this sport in Canada. Joining us once again this evening, our expert analyst and commentator Earl Lennox, the track announcer here at Greenwood. And Earl, we talked about Jake LaBelle off the top of the show that he's going to be the prohibitive favorite in this race. When you look at him, it makes you kind of wonder why, because he looks like sort of an average horse. In fact, he may even be a little skinny, but somehow or other, he's a pacing machine. Well, he's got speed and gait and manners, Steve, but the most important ingredient he has is, I heard Earl Rowe describe it once, a former Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, and uh, he said it's what's in front of the throat latch that counts, how much they want to win, and this horse wants to win real bad. 
That brings up the obvious question, is there anybody in this field of nine, anybody else in this field of nine that can beat him, that can realistically expect to be in the winner's enclosure when the race is over? Well, I don't know how realistically they can expect to beat him, but I think there are three or four horses that have a chance to beat him if luck goes in their favor, if they get a trip. And those horses are Frugal Gourmet, Rare Review, Log, and Stage Door Stevie. But they're going to need luck, and they're going to need somebody else to run Jate Lobel down. You mentioned Rare Review. That's one of the four Canadian horses in this field. The other five are all American entries. I would assume from what you're saying then that Rare Review is probably going to carry the Canadian colors if they are to be carried in this race. Well, based on his last two starts, Steve, he seems to have the best shot. He equaled the track record two weeks ago. He came back and won very impressively and took on all challengers last week in his elimination in 154 and, and four-fifths. So he looks like he has the best shot. But there are eight horses in there, and even if Jate Lobel gets first money, the rest of them are still going for $250,000 in second prize money. And that's not a bad second prize. It all comes down to money in this race. It's a million-dollar event, half a million going to the winner, $250,000 for second place, and that ain't hay. We'll be back to Greenwood in Toronto right after this. Still got about 20 minutes before the 1987 renewal of the North America Cup gets underway, so we've got a little time, and as a special treat, we're going to present another race right now. It's the 1987 kickoff pace, and Earl will tell you a bit more about that in just a moment. But speaking of kickoffs, and how's this for a segue, TSN kicks off its Canadian Football League coverage next Thursday night, that's June the 25th, as the Montreal Alouettes will be in Toronto to face the Argonauts, the first CFL game ever seen on TSN. That goes Thursday night from Toronto. Now, Earl, once again, the kickoff pace, which is coming up right now as a prelude to the North America Cup. Tell us a bit about what this race is and maybe who we can look at. There are nine starters in here, uh, Steve. It's a junior free-for-all, which includes the nine second-best group of pacers on the grounds here at Greenwood. And here's the field. Cedarwood George from post one. Uh, fella Dallas, perfect out, Southern Royale, who was the also eligible horse for the North America Cup, stayed around, and just in case there was a late scratch, he was warmed up and could have raced in the next race, the North America Cup, ripping gold, Stargaze Hanover, Armbro Everest, Doobie Time, and National Review, and the co-favorites on the board are Perfect Out and Southern Royale. Uh, in fact, uh, Perfect Out might be a, a slight favorite now at 9-5. to five. Uh, This whole horse, when you mention a million dollars, he's very close. Well, we're looking now at, uh, actually, that's Cedarwood George. And uh, on the inside there, in the wearing number three, well, that was perfect out, but we're looking at, there we are right now, Cedar, perfect out, rather. Perfect out, an interesting story here. He's approaching a million dollars in career earnings, so this is a very big race for him. And his owner, Clive Raymond, has a starter in the North America Cup in uh, perfect morning from the outside eight post. Uh, Cedarwood George, owned by the Varcos, Golden Harvest Stable, uh, who won with Envy Worthy in the Canadian Trotting Classic. He's the number one horse and uh, currently co-third choice in the betting with Stargaze Hanover, who is owned by Gordon and Isla Rumpel of Port Perry. They owned On the Road Again, who won $2.7 million, the richest Canadian-owned harness horse ever. And as we mentioned, one of the favorites is Southern Royale, the three-year-old who was eliminated uh, last Sunday from the North America Cup, but he stayed around because he was the first also eligible. So all in all, it shapes up as a fairly contentious race with uh, at least four horses looking like they've got a legitimate shot at it, and I, I suppose all of them do, really, but four horses that we have some knowledge of in Perfect Out, Cedarwood George, Stargaze Hanover, and Southern Royale, and uh, they're now going into the hands of the starter, so uh, as we look at the odds, one final time. We'll pass it back upstairs now to track announcer John Craig for the call of this fourth race, the kickoff pace. Oh, okay, thanks very much, Earl and Steve. We're just about ready to go. The horses are now in the hands of the starter. It's post time. The fourth race, the kickoff pace. And there they go. They're off and pacing. Cedarwood George drives out at the rail. From the extreme outside, that's Stargaze Hanover, and a ripping goal goes with him between horses. Perfect out is third. Racing fourth around the turn, that's Cedarwood George. 
National Review is fifth after an eighth mile. Fella Dallas racing in sixth. At the wood in seventh as they move towards the quarter mile station is Southern Royal. On the front end, Stargaze Hanover. Ripping gold, second. Perfect out is third, and he's on the move as Stargaze Hanover takes him past the quarter mile station in 28 and 3, and here comes Perfect Out up the challenge for the lead. Ripping gold, racing in third. Cedarwood George is fourth. National Review is fifth after the rail in front of the grandstand. Fallon Alice racing sixth. Southern Royal is seventh, then an eighth. That's Armbro Everest, and Doobie Time is ninth around the paddock turn. Perfect out for Steve Conrad, leads it by a length and a half. Stargaze Hanover second, Ripping Gold racing in third. Cedarwood George is fourth. National Review is racing in fifth. Fallon Alice is sixth. Half a mile in 58 seconds flat. In the back stretch, and Perfect Out continues with a two length advantage. Stargaze had over second, Ripping Gold racing him third. Cedarwood George now fourth in the outside, and National Review will follow him fifth with cover. Racing up to be sixth in the outside is Fallon Alice. Seventh up the rail, that's Armbro Everest as they race around the fire turn. Perfect out is a half a length in front. Up on the outside, Cedarwood George to challenge now. At the rail, racing in third, Stargaze head over. Fourth down the outside as it moves past the three quarters in 127 and one as it moves around the turn at National Review. At the top of the lane and Cedarwood George takes over the lead. Perfect out now second, National Review third in the outside. Stargaze head over fourth. Doobie time is fifth, ripping gold sixth between horses. Cedarwood George on the far outside. National Review is closing up with Felon. Alice, perfect out, coming back at the rail. Cedarwood George is staying game in the middle of the racetrack. Cedarwood George, here they are. The fans were right. Uh, Cedarwood George, perfect out, were bet down, and uh, you just showed me your ticket. You were right, too. Cedarwood George, owned by the Varcos, who owned Envy Worthy, winner of the Canadian Trotting Classic, gets up to win it in 156 and 1 fifth, and that's a new lifetime marks for him, so you know the track is very fast. This has been a very rewarding month for the Varcos, or a very rewarding last few weeks. They, of course, won our first race of the season here on TSN, the Canadian Trotting Classic, and now coming back with Cedarwood George, who's had a few near misses the last few outings he's made. He has indeed, and uh, as I mentioned on the last show, but for those of you who didn't see the last show, he was claimed in December for $50,000, and tonight he's won himself out. He's over 57000 now. He got the lead at the top of the stretch, but perfect out showed why he's won close to a million. He battled back gamely, just beaten a neck. Cedarwood George uh, hanging on for the win, and here it is again. Look at them dueling. Perfect out uh, comes right back on at the rail, but Cedarwood George had that advantage. And it was quite enough to get him there. You can see Perfect Out inching up. All right, and there you look at the finish of the kickoff pace. The first race of our evening here on TSN. And Cedarwood George, the winner by about a half a length over Perfect Out. A bit of an upset victory for Cedarwood George. Uh, the odds when uh, the race began with Cedarwood, for Cedarwood George were at Six to one, and that's going to be a nice little payoff. He'll pay $14, and you can note that Cedarwood George is one of the few free-legged pacers in the sport. He's, he races as a pacer, but he does not wear the normal plastic or leather uh, hobbles or straps that join his legs together. He does it all on his own, just like a trotter, Steve. Well, as we see Dave Wall and Cedarwood George heading into the winner's enclosure, we'll take our leave from Greenwood for just a moment and be back with the prelude to the 1987 North America Cup right here on TSN after this. at Jade Lobel as they were making final preparations for the 1987 running of the North America Cup post time just a little bit more about uh, just a little more than half an hour or rather a little less than half an hour away Steve Cooney along with Earl Lennox at Greenwood Raceway in Toronto all of this event in addition to centering around money centers around Jade Lobel the horse is 
just phenomenal. 21 victories and 22 career starts. That includes a win in the elimination and his heat in the elimination for the North America Cup last week here at Greenwood. You've got to believe that if the horse is going to lose the race, that's what it's going to be. He'll lose. It won't be so much somebody else winning as him losing, if, if you know what I mean, the kind of setting that difference. Well, that's the way the story will uh, evolve, Steve, that he was defeated. The, the other horse, whoever happens to beat him, if they do beat him, uh, won't be credited with the victory. It'll be him credited with the loss. And, you know, this race is just four years old, and the first three editions were won by Canadian-owned horses. So uh, even though this horse isn't Canadian-owned, uh, his mother was bred and raised here in Canada by Russ Miller, so there is, we can claim it, a little Canadian connection to Jade Lobel, and uh, hopefully that'll be enough to carry him through the North America Cup. The North America Cup carries a purse of something over a million dollars, and the purse structure is kind of interesting. Let's take a look, first of all, what the five horses who figure in the money are going to get. Well, the first place winner gets $500,000, or 50% of the purse. The second horse, a quarter of a million, and you can see the rest uh, work on down from them. 12%, 8%, and 5% to the third, fourth, and fifth place horses, respectively. Now, I think what really makes this interesting is the way they arrive at the figures of how the money, or how they get the money, rather, that goes into this million-dollar purse. Of course, the Ontario Jockey Club puts up a certain amount of it, but there are other factors to take into consideration, and the nomination fees kind of explain that. Well, right. On February the 15th, 79 three-year-old Pacers nominated at $1,000. Then on March the 15th, another 70 uh, sustained. 62 sustained again on April the 16th. On April the 15th, they dropped to 44 by May the 15th. The uh, horses obviously weren't racing well or training well. And now, uh, of course, last Sunday night there were 22 made the final payment of $8,000, Steve. So you see a total of $651,000 put up by the horsemen. The jockey club puts up the rest. We should clarify, too, that it's actually worth a little more than a million dollars. It's actually about one million one hundred fifty thousand because they've already given away one hundred fifty thousand fifty thousand to each of the for each of the elimination heats last week. That's right. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, there were several out of the, out of the uh, 22 horses who named the eliminations. We've only got nine finalists all together. Uh, the horses who didn't make tonight's race have contributed five hundred and seven thousand dollars towards the person payments and all they get to do is sit at home and watch it on tv or from up in the grandstand with no interest in the race other than the fact that well i put up a little bit of that money i guess i've got a stake in it somewhere well that's uh, true they they uh, they're actually betting that amount of money uh, around the ones that actually started on sunday night bet close to sixteen thousand dollars to win to win a million so for the punters who think they're risking something on this race the real people the people that are risking the real money are the horsemen and the owners. That's right. A $2 bet uh, compared to the 16000 put up. Not to mention the fact that they bought the horses uh, uh, to begin with. But uh, there'll be no uh, tag day for Jate Lobel because he had no trouble arriving at that uh, 16000 He's already made 380000 so far this year, Steve. And he's getting... Uh, getting close to a million lifetime. In fact, he's very close to the million and will go well over it with, if he happens to win, if he gets any part of the purse tonight, in fact, he'll go over it. You know, it's interesting to note that Jade Lobel has a lot to win in this race. He also has a lot to lose because there's a certain amount of prestige involved. Uh, he's already been syndicated, but it, it can harm his reputation a bit if he loses this race because he's in against a tough field, and I guess people are going to expect that if he is the best, he's going to beat the best. Well, and uh, this race in four years has become the, the, a major uh, event in North America and in the world of harness racing. The, the sport of harness racing is focusing in on the race. Uh, Chicago.